You won't believe it, but I'm in jail right now. Just kidding, this used to be a prison, but is now a tourist attraction in Vilnius, the capital of Lithuania. This is so strange, thinking about how things used to be here. The notorious Lukashkis prison was a place of murder and torture for over a hundred years. That came to an end in 2019 and a cultural center emerged on the prison grounds. More on that later. The symbol of Vilnius stands 140 meters above the city, the Gediminas Tower, a remnant of what was once the city's most powerful defense system, the Gediminas Castle. Hello from Vilnius in Lithuania. Have you ever heard of it? Well, Lithuania is one of the three Baltic states in Eastern Europe. Russia and Belarus are direct neighbors and, well, the war in Ukraine is not that far away. And I want to know what is there to discover? Is it still safe to travel here in these times? My name is Lukas Stegel from DW Travel and that's what I want to find out. The Russian war in Ukraine is viewed with concern in Lithuania. No wonder, because the length of the Lithuanian border separating the Russian exclave of Kaliningrad from Belarus is only some 100 kilometers. Many Lithuanians fear that it could be Putin's next target. Of course, this also worries tourists like me. Is it the same for other holiday makers in Vilnius? Wie weit fühlen Sie sich sicher? Also ich fühle mich total sicher. Es, es war auch vorneweg schon kein Gedanke da, dass wir da jetzt irgendwo in ein gefährliches Gebiet reisen oder ähnliches. It's, it's Europe, so if something happened here, I think Europe can react. Wir haben uns überlegt, ob wir jetzt fahren sollen aufgrund der Situation in der Ukraine, aber wir haben dann gedacht, doch erst recht. Hardly any other country has condemned the war in Ukraine as vehemently as Lithuania. They've taken a firm stand, in a way that is as creative as it is clear. Solidarity is huge in Lithuania, both among the general population and the politicians. The street where the Russian embassy is located has been renamed Street of Ukrainian Heroes. Lithuania recently restricted freight traffic to the Russian exclave of Kaliningrad. Belarus and Lithuania lie between the Russian heartland and Kaliningrad. But while Belarus continues to allow all Russian trains through, Lithuania bans the passage of Russian trains carrying goods falling under EU sanctions. Moscow speaks of an illegal blockade. The passenger trains from Russia to Kaliningrad via Lithuanian territory are not affected. Lithuania must let them pass. Twice a day the train to Kaliningrad pulls into Vilnius station. Twice a day it stops for 10 minutes. An announcement in Russian asks the passengers to look out of the window, where they are confronted with pictures of Russian war crimes. They show the destruction in Ukraine. On each picture the same question is written in Russian. Today Putin is killing the peaceful people of Ukraine. Do you agree with this? That's really tough. I'm wondering what the people on the train think about these pictures. I was just told that this lady is coming here every day when the train is passing. I am touched by the sympathy that Lithuanians have for Ukrainians. The train is gone right now and I don't know what to say. It was so strange. The war in Ukraine and a tense atmosphere can be felt everywhere in the country. One business that is benefiting from this fear and seeing sales skyrocket is the Oxalis arms dealership. According to the owner, demand increased tenfold in the first month after the war began. 
This is for self-defense, for right. home defense. Yes. I mean, why are you so surprised? You have Switzerland, we have, I mean, machine guns at homes, you know, so... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I don't know anything about guns, so this is all pretty new to me, you know? And, um, well, if I'm thinking of, of self-defense, I'm thinking about a small handgun and not about a shotgun. Yeah, but it's more effective weapon, actually, you know? It's more effective than a handgun. You need less... To, yeah, you can. Like this? Yeah, you can load it, you know, just like in the movies, just put, pull it back and forward. We know what we ha can be afraid of, you know, uh, if the Russian comes. And after the last footage is from Bucha in Ukraine, you know, when you see a lot of civilians just killed in the street, peop uh, women raped, children killed, so people don't want to, well, I mean, they're afraid and they want to have something to, to be able to defend themselves and their families. Since the beginning of the war, the number of applications for gun licenses in Lithuania has doubled. Due to the current situation, there are fewer restrictions here than elsewhere in Europe. The right to self-defense at home applies, even with the use of firearms. Who is buying the guns? Young people, elderly people, men or women? I mean, everybody does. And most surprisingly, well, not surprisingly, because of what happened in Ukraine, there are quite a lot of women who are coming to buy handguns and even shotguns for home defense. Even though I'm safe as a tourist here in Vilnius, I still have a sinking feeling. But now, city guy Kristupas will show me the city. Our first stop, a small memorial plaque. Warum fangen wir unsere Tour denn hier an, an dieser Platte? Was ist daran so besonders? Also, was steht hier drauf? Las Tebuk. Es steht Stebuklas und das heißt ein Wunder. Welches Wunder denn? Na, die Platte ist hier, um uns daran zu erinnern, jeden Tag, das es gibt ja Wunder. Das größte Wunder ist, dass wir haben unsere Unabhängigkeit gekriegt, wo drei unbewaffnete baltische Völker kämpften gegen den mächtigen Sowjetunion. Und die Leute waren auch so einig damals, dass niemand wollte mehr unter die kommunistische Besatzung mehr sein, kein einziger Tag. Aber man hat es friedlich geschafft. Niemand hat Molotow-Cocktails geworfen oder Steine auf die Polizei. Man hat einfach sich gesammelt, war einig und hat man gesungen. Und das war genug. Und es ist ganz üblich, dass wenn man geht vorbei, man stellt sich hier hinein, man schließt die Augen und geht mal dreimal um. Und man muss, man muss sich einen Wunsch ausdenken und es wird bestimmt erfüllt, aber das kann ich nicht laut sagen. Vielleicht heute schon, vielleicht nach zehn Jahren, aber es wird erfüllt. Ich darf es nicht sagen. Ich mach das für mich selbst. Ja. Okay. Of course, I can't say it out loud, but because of the war in Ukraine, you can probably guess what I wish for. We continue to the most famous site of the city, the Cathedral of St. Stanislaus. It is the center of the Catholic faith in Lithuania. The classicist building was finished in the early 19th century. The bell tower stands alone, as is the case with many churches in the Baltic states. At 68 meters high, it is the tallest building in Vilnius' old town. Next, Kristupas takes me through the old town. It is huge and has been a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1994. Winding streets and alleys, magnificent townhouses and palaces. I like it. Vilnius is also called the City of Churches. There are more than 50 of them. Also here have we two important churches. Die Franziskuskirche, rechter Seite, und links die Heilige Anna-Kirche. Das ist nicht eine, sondern es sind zwei? Zwei. Okay. Aber die sind auch verbunden, mit Blut verbunden sogar. Nach einer schönen Legende, der deutsche Architekt, der baute die Franziskuskirche, wurde so neidisch auf seinem litauischen Schüler, der baute die Anna-Kirche viel schöner. Und die wurde zum berühmtesten Kirche vom Wildnis damals. Das äh, hat gefragt, kannst du mir erzählen, wie hast du das alles gebaut, so technisch, die sind auf dem Dach gestiegen und der Alter hat mal so gemacht, der Jünger fiel nach unten, der fließt Blut und die Kirchen kriegten die romantische rote Farbe, sozusagen. Now Christopas takes me to the last remaining medieval city gate in Lithuania. The small chapel above not only attracts tourists.
Chris, ich habe jetzt schon ein paar Leute gesehen, die sind hier durchgekommen und haben sich dorthin gedreht und sich bekreuzigt. Warum? Wir sind an den Tod der Mord gerührt. Ja? Und das ist das heiligste Ort für alle Christen Litans. Da gibt es ein Bild von der jungen Frau, oft genannt die schwarze Madonna von Wildnis. Die kann gegen alle Krankheiten helfen. Und man kommt hier zum Gebet schon mehrere Jahrhunderte. Vilnius presents itself as a very western city. Not much evokes its Soviet past. But there are still a few architectural relics from the communist era. For example, the former concert and sports palace, a building in the brutalist style. In 2006, it was placed under monument protection. However, the building remains unused and is falling into disrepair. The Parliament Building of Lithuania was built in 1976. The Supreme Soviet of the Lithuanian Soviet Socialist Republic met here. Soviet architecture is usually huge architecture. <laughs> The Opera House, which opened in 1974, is also a reminder of the Soviet past. Operas and concerts are still performed here today. Finally, I go back to prison. Lukishka's prison, which has become a symbol of freedom. Nobody is locked up here anymore. I recommend a tour of the prison cells. It still looks the same as it did a hundred years ago. Sharunas Valitskas explains to me what life was like behind these thick walls. A two-hour tour with him in English costs 20 euros. Take a seat. What did you do? I stole some sweets from, um, from a shop. And what did you do afterwards? I ran away. And what afterwards? <laughs> Lukishka's prison was considered the Alcatraz of Lithuania because of its cruelty. Common criminals and political opponents were imprisoned here. Since the prison is in the middle of the old city, the screams of the prisoners inside could easily be heard from outside. So this is like a typical prison cell? Absolutely. This is what you would have for the rest of your life. It's small, but kind of comfortable here, you know? At the end of the tour, you get your own mock shot. Touching the wall. No smiling here. The last prisoners were released in 2019. This place, whose past is full of scary stories, has become a place of artistic freedom. Almost every evening, there are concerts and film screenings here. I really like Vilnius. Lots of history, cool architecture, art. And the Soviet Union, fortunately, only exists in the museum. Even if the war in Ukraine is relatively close, Vilnius is an exciting and, at least for the moment, safe travel destination. If you liked the video, please subscribe to our channel DW Travel so you can see more of these productions. Bye bye, see you next time.